Good evening and welcome to the annual budget meeting of the representative town meeting on May 7th. Will the clerk please call the roll? Pete Ambrose? Yes. Ed Bateson? Yes. Nancy Lefkowitz? Yes. Keith Varian? Yes. Bill Gerber? Yes. Aaron Lopez? Yes. Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Perham? Yes. Heather Dean? Yes. Alex Durrell? Yes. Matt Jacobs? Yes. Sharon Pastilli? Yes. Alice Kelly? Yes. Frank O'Reilly? Yes. Bill Pierce? Yes. Marcy Spallier? Yes. Josh Garskoff? Yes. Joe Siebert? Ruth Smay, Jay Wolk, Matt Ambrose, Steve Barrett, Hannah Gale, Lisa Havey, Lauren Bowe, Mark McDermott, Jill Vergara, Karen Wackerman, Carrie Burcham, Pamela Iacono, Christine Messina, Pete Talman, Brian Farnan, Drew Georgiadis, Doreen Heron, Margaret Horton, Sam Cargill, Michael Hurley, yes. Frank Patisse, Eric Sundman. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. The first item on our agenda is to consider and act upon self-supporting funds in the amount of $5,626,215 for the Water Pollution Control Authority for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Representative Dean, seconded by Representative Stolyar. Turn this item. Seeing none, is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, we'll um, take a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Next, item three, to consider and act upon self-supporting funds in the amount of $103,267 for the Regional Fire Training School for the fiscal year of July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Representative Kelly, seconded by Representative Vergara. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, uh, we'll entertain a motion, or we'll, we'll vote. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All opposed? Abstentions. The motion carries. Um, next, we'll have the item number four to consider an act on proposed appropriations in the amount of $305,191,969 for the fiscal year of July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019, as recommended by the Board of Finance for any lawful purpose. The total proposed budget as approved by the Board of Finance is as follows, and the number as follows on the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Representative Wackerman, seconded by Representative Bean. Um, just so everyone is aware, we'll, we'll limit comment from the body to 10 minutes, and we'll limit comment from the public to three minutes. Um, the microphone to speak is over there at the end of the blue table, and there is a carpet to stand on when you are speaking. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to discussion from the body. Representative Wackerman. Karen Wacker in District 7. Um, I'm very uh, happy to vote in favor of the budget today. Um, I'm grateful to Mr. Tetro and to the department heads in Fairfield because this is a tough year in which to create a budget um, with all the state cuts. Um, but thanks to their hard work, we have a, um, we have a budget that preserves services, um, but it's lean, it's fiscally responsible. Um, there are some cuts to funding, it's true, but those are necessary this year. Um, the budget is intended to protect the town from further cuts that we may see from the state. We know that that's a possibility. Um, so this, I think that it's quite a feat that the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Education, the Board of Finance, they all spent a long time considering this budget. And then we had the opportunity to attend those meetings, we did, and we watched them, and we asked a lot of questions, and. Um, I think at all of the um, town bodies were um, very diligent. Thanks. Any other discussion from members of the body?
Representative Pastelli. I'm Sharon Pastelli, District 3. Um, I wanted to voice my support for the overall budget and specifically uh, wanted to thank our Public Works Department um, and Joe Michelangelo. Um, he's really done a great job and the Public Works Department has done a, a wonderful job of putting a lot of thought and effort into a very lean budget. Um, the administrative budget it represents an increase of 4.63% and the only increase there is payroll. And on the operations side, um, there's a decrease of 2.5%. Um, in order to protect the residents from damaging cuts, there have been substantial reductions to paving and capital expenditures, including uh, the purchase of new trucks and equipment and of sidewalk repair. Um, and we saw an increase in fuel prices across the board. Um, I think that the, the reduction in paving and the delay in the purchase of new trucks is of concern to uh, many of us, but it's really necessary, you know, given the current environment and um, the, the town will make the best with the resources it has available. And the other thing that I wanted to highlight on a positive note is over the past decade, um, both the DPW and volunteers from the Clean Energy Task Force have placed a tremendous amount of em emphasis on sustainability and cost savings. And it's really been very worthwhile. Um, currently, 30% of the town's electricity comes from renewable resources, which is a great thing to brag about. And um, also, the use of the hydrogen fuel cell at the wastewater treatment plant has saved the taxpayers a considerable amount of money and helps the environment. The sustainable initiatives um, save the town over $2.5 million a year. And so the, the people of Fairfield will depend on our public works department to continue with their thoughtful planning on how to use the town's funds in the most efficient way possible while making appropriate repairs and investments um, to our infrastructure and our equipment. And despite all the challenges with the state budget, they've really done a great job of, of uh, doing the best with what they have available and keeping our roads in good shape and weathering snowstorms and keeping our town prepared for hurricanes. So I just wanted to express my support for them and to thank uh, thank them for everything that they've done for the, this year and also just to um, support the budget as it's presented. Further comments from members of the body? Representative Dean? <coughs> Representative Dean, District 3. I took down a couple of notes. There. Uh, I'm, I'm in support of the budget in its entirety, and I'd like to thank um, our first selectman, Mike Tetro, and his administration for putting forward a very responsible budget um, with uh, finance and uh, the Board of Finance going over it for over 100 hours, making sure that um, everything was checked and that we are going to be financing our programs and our services that uh, make Fairfield a wonderful place. In particular, I wanted to talk about the education budget. Um, I was just sharing with my, um, my colleagues that uh, I, this is my 13th budget that I'll be voting on since 2004. So I've seen quite a few of the budget processes and, uh, and the meetings and so on and so forth. But um, this year, my daughter is graduating out of high school. She's the last one. And uh, I care just as much about the budget for next year, although my children won't be impacted as I did when I first started in 2004. And there's a couple things that I wanted to talk about in particular about our budget. Um, there's only four, hang in there. Uh, all recognized econ economic studies show a direct relationship between a quality public school system and a growing grant list. Investing in schools is not a burden to taxes, but helps increase grant lists. Thus, it's a benefit to a fair and just tax system. For generations have benefited from Fairfield's quality school systems. It is what has attracted families to our town forever. It is our generation's turn to continue that fine tradition and give the resources to the public schools that are needed to educate our children and ensure their future. A 2.95% 2 .95, 2 .95 request is more than fair. 
The Board of Education has always tried to meet the needs of the school system with a financially responsible budget request. And I'd like to thank Phil Dwyer and the Board of Education for working as hard as they have in the past this year or two. If anything, they probably could have asked for a slightly larger increase this year, given the past budget reductions over the last many years, and deserved it. And last, this budget that maintains this is a budget that maintains the existing quality but includes efforts to make improvements to additional services. And there were two that stood out to me in particular that I wanted to share about. One was something that my daughter had benefited when she was in elementary school, and that was the gifted uh, program. And there were, the leadership capacity is being increased with strengthening the role of the gifted leadership in grades through third through third through fifth grade. And I'm very appreciative of that continuing to happen for all the, um, the elementary school children that are coming through as well. And the last one um, really hit home, especially in light of what's happened um, in February with Parkland. And that was um, implement a complex learner cohort with a social and emotional focus to build the capacity of staff to work with students who have behavioral challenges. I'm very proud of our school system and I'm proud of our town, and I'm proud that we take this type of um, work very seriously, and that we care about our children, and we care about the safety of our children, and we care about the education and the social emotional welfare of our children. And I will be supporting this budget. Thank you. Further comment from members of the body? Representative Perham. Cindy Perham, District 2. I just wanted to give a shout out to Terry Giegengack from the Senior Center. I just wanted to um, support the increase 4.84% to the Senior Center budget, which is a re reallocation of $13,000, not changing the head count, but going from a part-time clerk to a part-time social worker supervisor. She actually, as a director, supervises. Terry manages 17 part-time staff and one other full-time person. Plus, she's responsible for building repairs, renovations, and all of the responsibilities. So thank you, Terry. I see you in the back row. And uh, you're doing a great job. Further discussion from members of the body? Representative Horton. representing District 9. I also just wanted to take a minute to express my support for this budget and wanted to uh, mention in particular the Parks and Recreation budget. You know, a huge part of what makes Fairfield so special are really things that fall under Parks and Rec. There's programming offered through the department that cater to the needs of all residents, from our young families to our seniors. Um, a huge number of these programs, almost 20 actually, are self-supported, and this department actually generates important revenue for our town, notably through the rentals and concessions here at the beautiful Penfield complex. Um, the department really offers services that are essential, I think, to the well-being of our town and go a long way towards achieving the goal of ensuring that Fairfield continues to be a vibrant community where people want to live, which, as we all know, is integral to the economic well-being of our town and growing the grand list. Thanks. Further discussion from members of the body? Seeing none, we'll move to the public comment. Any comment from members of the public? Seeing none, we'll take a vote on um, item number four to consider and act upon the proposed appropriation in the amount of $305,191,969 for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019, as recommended by the Board of Finance for any lawful purpose. The total proposed budget as approved by the Board of Finance is as follows, and it is as stated on the agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Representative Bateson, Hurley, Ambrose, Durrell. Did I get everyone? Any abstentions? The motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Moved by Representative Dean, seconded by Representative Hurley. We are adjourned. Thank you. Bye.